I am Anil Kumar. Let me first thank my subscriber Arun for posting few excellent questions, and I hope their solution will help many others. The question here is: A particle P moves in a straight line so that its displacement s in meters from a fixed point O on the line is given by s equals to 3t square minus 12, where t is the time in seconds after passing a point A on the line. So let's first understand the question itself. We are talking about motion along a straight line, correct? Right? So we are also given here that there is a point A somewhere, right? Uh, we don't know where this point is. There is some point A, and at this point, A t equals to zero. So we are talking about displacement s of t equals to three t square minus twelve, where t is greater than equal to zero. And t is zero when the particle crosses point A. Perfect. First part here is find the distance O A. So from some fixed point origin O to this point A. But we know at A t is zero. So if I substitute zero here, what do I get? I get three times zero minus twelve. So I get twelve. With a negative sign, let me write here as minus twelve, and the units are meters, right? So that means the point A is really towards left of the origin, right? So, so let me mark the point O here now, since we know that this is to the left of origin. So I hope now you appreciate why I didn't start with O, right? So that is the case, and whenever we talk about A rectilinear motion along a straight line, the line really gives you displacement. That is, the position from a fixed point at any given time. Right. Part B is find the velocity of p when it passes O. So now we have to see what is the velocity when the particle is here. Right. So that means. From A, it must be moving in this direction, which is considered to be the positive direction. Correct? How do we figure this out? Now, since we are interested in velocity, we need to take the derivative. So, for part two, so first one, let me write down. It is 12 meters to the left. We are saying distance, right? Distance is always positive quantity. So, we'll say 12 meters left of O. Distance is 12 meters, right? So we don't write negative here, since it is a distance. Now let's move on to part B. Find the velocity of particle p when it passes O. Now when it passes O, at that times, s distance should be zero because distance is from O. Do you get the idea? Distance is from O. So let me write down here when. At O, at that time s of t equals to zero, right? So this is very important to understand, and that gives you the time when we are really interested in finding the velocity. Do you get the idea? So, so let's recalculate the time when displacement is zero. So I'll substitute zero here in our equation and calculate what t is. So we get three t square minus twelve. And from here we get that 12 equals to 3t square, dividing by 3, and then we get t square is 12 over 3, which is 4, and that gives you time t as square root of 4, which is 2, and the units are seconds. Perfect. So basically, we need to find the velocity of particle when it passes through O, and at this time, t is equal to two seconds. We have to take t always positive. I'm not considering negative value, since t is after it passes point A. So I hope that part is absolutely clear. Now, since we need to find the velocity, what should I do? 
I know the displacement function, so I will find its derivative. So let's find derivative of displacement. So that is s dash t will give you applying the power rule 6t. So now we only want displacement, I mean the velocity at t equals to 2. So, so the velocity, this is velocity, right? Derivative of displacement. So this velocity at t equals to 2 will be 6 times 2 or 12 units being meter per second. So that is how we get answer for part b which is velocity is equals to 12 meters per second. So I hope that is absolutely clear, right? Part c. Show that p never comes to rest after passing a. Now it never comes to rest means what? Uh, never comes to rest means that velocity is never zero. So when I say that p never comes to rest, that means that the velocity is never equal to zero, right? So when the velocity is zero, only then the particle is at rest. Normally that happens at a turning point, right? Or something like this. So in our case, we know that the velocity is basically equal to 6t and after passing a, t is actually greater than 0, right? After passing a, right? So that means it is never equal to 0, right? So it is never 0. Do you understand now? For velocity to be 0, t should be 0. But t is greater than 0 and therefore it is never 0. So that is how we could answer part C. Perfect. Now, now let me continue on a fresh page to find the average speed of p during the first three seconds. So what we are really given here is the displacement function s of t equals to 3t square minus 12 and we know when t is equal to 0 at that time the displacement is minus 12 right so when t equals to 0. We need to find what is the displacement when t equals to 3. So if I substitute 3 here, I get 3, 3 squared minus 12. That gives us 3 times 9 minus 12 or 27 minus 12, right? So 27 minus 12 is uh, 15, right? So displacement is 15. Now, let's look into this situation to clearly understand what are we trying to do, okay? We want to find average speed of p during the first three seconds. So the question here is to find average speed in first three seconds. We also realize that the derivative of the displacement function is 6t. So that means always increasing. Right, since t is greater than or equal to 0, so since it starts from point A, it is always increasing, and we saw that the point A was uh, from O, left side, right? So this position here was at, at minus 12, right? So that was the real position. Now what we notice here is that after 3 seconds, the object has moved 15 units to the right of O, right? So somewhere here, so which is 15 units to the right of O. So what should be the average speed? That is what you have to think. Perfect. Now with this clear diagram, I hope it is absolutely clear that the distance is this total distance, correct? So that is the distance. So what we need to find here is the ratio of, we need average speed, right? Average speed is total distance over time taken. Now since the particle is moving only in one direction, uh, we could straight away uh, do our calculations by taking away S of 3 from, I mean this is 3, from S of 0 and dividing from 3 minus 0, correct? 
So that gives you total distance and time taken. So in this case, the distance is 15 minus of minus 12 divided by 3. Now that gives you, if you add them, because that becomes positive, 2 plus 5 is 7 and, uh, and uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. So we get again 27 over 3, uh, which, is, which is 9. Correct. So average speed in this case is 9 meters per second. Is that clear? Right. So, so basically what you need to do is since the particle is moving in one direction, we'll have another example where there will be a turning point. So things become slightly tricky in that case. Now here it is straightforward. Since the particle is always moving in one direction, we could straight away find the distance as s of 3 minus s of 0. Right. So at 3, it is 27 minus 12. And at 0, it is minus 12. So the difference between these two is 27. And dividing by 3, we get 9 meters per second. So the average speed here is 9 meters per second. So I hope the steps taken here are clear. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you really like and subscribe to my videos, then I'll be very grateful. Thanks for watching and all the best.